Hey guys, so we already covered all the major changes coming to the pre-patch of Shadowlands, so if you missed the video, make sure to check it out. But today we'll take a look at 19 minor changes coming to the pre-patch of Shadowlands, and as with the previous video, I'll keep it short and simple, and only include the minor things that I find useful. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So, the first minor change is the brand new login screen with Icecrown Citadel in the background. I know some of you think it's a bit too simple and I completely agree with you, but trust me when I say the music makes up for it, and if you haven't listened to the music yet, make sure to do so. The second minor change is actually the character selection screen, so whenever somebody sends you an in-game mail, you'll now be able to see it directly from here, instead of logging onto the character and checking the mailbox to see if you have a mail or not, so it's actually a good change. The third thing is something add-ons have had for years and it's finally coming to the game, and that's the quick keybind mode. The great thing about this change is that you don't need an external add-on to quickly keybind your spells anymore, which is always a good thing. Next we have the new quest marker, so if you've used TomTom -tom in the past, it's somewhat similar to that. Basically a marker will show you where to go to complete a quest, and that's basically it. Now talking about quests, something really cool that they are adding is the new quest log summary. So when you complete a chapter within a zone, you can read a small summary to catch up with the story before you continue. So if you have a boomer brain like I do, it's definitely a welcome feature. Now the map pin is also a brand new thing. You know how frustrating it can be when someone tells you some coordinates to a rare, but you don't have the add-on installed? Well this is gonna fix it with the new map pin. You can now pin the location and send it to anyone without an external add-on, so you don't have to worry if the person has the add-on or not. While we are on the topic of add-ons, you know how you had to log out of the game every single time you installed a new add-on? Well, during the pre-patch, this is no longer the case. You just have to install the add-on you want and slash reload for it to show up, so pretty simple and installing an add-on won't be as tedious anymore. Now the class trials are getting some updates as well, and this time around you'll be learning your class above Icecrown Citadel, fighting the Scourge who is trying to invade the ship. They are also changing when you can learn the different writing skills, and that's basically because the leveling is being completely reworked. The first writing skill you'll be able to get is at level 10, then 20, 30, and 40. With these changes, they are also completely removing the 280% mount speed. Now, while we're on the topic of mounts, they are also removing the Pathfinder requirements in Warlords of Draenor and Legion. You will still be able to get the achievement if you want it, but you don't need it to fly in those two expansions. And hopefully this is something they will add to Battle for Azrod as well. So next up we have some changes to the transmogs. So because of the level squish, the way transmog is gonna work is a bit different as well. From level 1 to 10 you'll be able to transmog everything from vanilla, then from level 10 to 50 you'll be able to transmog anything up until Shadowlands. So if you wanna use transmog from Battle for Azeroth in your level 10 character, you can do so. And at level 48 you can start transmogging Shadowlands stuff as well. Now, while we are still talking about transmog, you know how Legion artifact weapons used to be locked to your spec, so, for example, if you played an arms warrior, you couldn't transmog fury weapons, and vice versa. Well, all of that is being changed, so the artifact weapon transmogs will be available for all three specs, which is a really good change. Now one of my favorite minor changes gotta be the individual shoulder transmog, and what I mean by this is that you'll be able to transmog your shoulders separately. So if you want one shoulder pad to have a specific transmog and the other one to have nothing, well, you'll be able to do so. The next minor change is a rework to the heirloom gear. They are removing all the experience bonus that you used to get and replacing it with set bonuses instead. I mean, we don't really need the EXP bonus anymore since the leveling is gonna be so much faster and you can probably get from 10 to 50 in about 6 to 7 hours. So leveling an alt will be easy even without the experience bonus. So personally I'm just happy that they added something instead. Now, because the new level cap is gonna be 60 in Shadowlands, you need to level an allied race to 50 in order to get the heritage armor sets. And basically, it's gonna be way easier than it is now in Battle for Azeroth. Next up, we have the changes coming to the spell book. So, for example, as a mage, you currently have a tab called General, Frost, Arcane, and Fire, but they're adding an additional tab for the classes as well. So, as a mage, this is where your Arcane Intellect will be, Mirror Images, and so on. Basically, all the spells that you'll be able to use across all three specs. So, finding the spells will be much easier. 
They're also adding controller support. Now, if you wanted to play with a controller in the past, you had to use a ton of different add-ons, which was quite tedious. But now you'll be able to keybind everything directly from the game. Next we have the nerf to drums. In Battle for Azeroth if you use drums you would get a 25% haste buff, but that has been nerfed to 15% haste instead, so quite a big nerf. The final minor thing that's coming to the pre-patch is the new mentor system. This system is something that other games have been using for years, but basically veteran players can become mentors for new players and gain access to a new channel called the newcomer channel and get a special icon so newcomers to the game can easily recognize who is there to help them. So if you want to become a mentor, there are some requirements that you have to meet. For example, you have to be at least level 50, complete 3000 quests and earn at least two of the achievements shown on the screen. But yeah guys, these were the 19 minor changes coming to the game that I thought were worth mentioning. If you have some, please share them with us in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, stay safe, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Take care.